In this module, I would like to compare both the mitosis and meiosis side by side to highlight the differences, important differences. Both these processes start after the DNA has replicated. So the total amount of DNA is doubled. In mitosis, we have one cell division. So end result is equal amount of DNA in the two daughter cells. In meiosis, the cells divide twice and results in half the number of half the amount of DNA in the daughter cells. Here you can see mitosis on top and meiosis in the bottom. In the parent cell is 2N. At prophase of both these processes, mitosis and meiosis, the chromosomes have condensed, the centrosomes have divided. However, the big difference here is that there is synapsis in meiosis but not in mitosis. Synapsis is basically the process in which two homologous chromosomes come together. As a result or consequence of synapsis, crossing over takes place in which chromosomes exchange parts. Here I have, I am pointing out to the synapsis and this two homologous chromosomes sitting next to each other is basically the tetrad. The whole complex, the whole structure is called the tetrad. In mitosis, in metaphase, the chromosomes, individual chromosomes line up at the metaphase place. Here you can see in the metaphase of the mitosis. In metaphase 1 of meiosis, the chromosomes, individual chromosomes are not lining up. It's the homologous chromosomes which are lining up as tetrads. The tetrads are lining up at the metaphase plate. Homologous chromosomes are sitting next to each other. The homologous chromosomes will be separated in the subsequent phase, which is the anaphase. And at this stage, the centromeres are not separating. They are still holding the two chromatids, the sister chromatids together. So after the anaphase 1, we will go to the telophase. In the telophase, the process, as we know, repeats. In mitosis, there is after telophase, we have the end product. The daughter cells are formed. Okay, here's the telophase. After the telophase of mitosis, we have the daughter cells. The daughter cells are identical to the parent cell. In, however, in meiosis, the daughter cells that have formed have different type of genetic information. First of all, chromosomes, only one partner of the homologous chromosome is present in each cell. Additionally, the chromosomes have also exchanged parts, exchanged little pieces with each other. And there at telophase 1, these nuclei contain different chromosomes, which are very different from the paternal chromosomes. At metaphase 2, now this is similar to the mitosis metaphase. Here, the individual chromosomes are lining up at the metaphase plate. When at this stage, the centromere will divide, the cohesion molecule will be disintegrated and the individual chromatids will now separate and move to the opposite poles. End result is there are four daughter cells with each half the number or n number of chromosomes. In the mitosis, the products or the daughter cells have 2n. They have the same amount of genetic material as the parent. Additionally, at this stage, I would also like to mention that sometimes there are mistakes that are made in meiosis, which have serious consequences. In meiosis, for example, if the homologous chromosomes fail to separate from each other, or in meiosis 2, if the chromatids, sister chromatids, fail to separate from each other, the resulting germ cells, whether they are sperms or egg, they will either be missing a chromosome or they will have an additional chromosome. This happens. When this happens, the offspring will have incorrect number of chromosomes. It so happens that the effects of a chromosome that is lacking in a, uh, in a fertilized egg or an embryo are more disastrous than additional chromosome. The only case in which an additional chromosome or trisomy is tolerated is 21, chromosome 21. All other monosomies in which a chromosome is missing or if there is an additional chromosome are not tolerated and generally these individuals do not have a normal life.
or not viable. With this, we will conclude our cell division.